we have heard of boundless love that Sri Rupa Sanatana had for the lotus feet of Shiman Mahaprabhu and Radha Krishna. And we see the huge storehouse of books that they have written, each filled with loving syllables. It would be proper to call them oceans of loving devotional flavors. Why does Srila Thakura Mahasaya call them just wells instead? Why wells instead of oceans? <clears throat> the ocean is mixed with water from different incoming rivers. But well water <clears throat> is not mixed with any other water. It remains always itself. In the same way, <clears throat> the loving devotional flavors that are preached, <clears throat> the loving devotional flavors that are preached by Sri Rupa Sanatana are most pure. They are not mixed with jnana, or yoga, or so. Nor with feelings of awe and reverence. <coughs> it is most pure and completely sweet. Secondly, the water of the ocean is mixed with salt and is therefore unfit for drinking. The water of rivers and ponds are very hot in the summer and muddy as well. So they are also not nice to drink. Well water, however, is both cool and tasty. In the same manner, jnana, yoga, etc. are never able to stop the suffering and lamentation of the conditioned souls that are constantly afflicted by the pangs of the Kali age. Only loving devotion is able to soothe their life airs. Loving devotion soothes the burning pangs of the suffering and lamentation in material existence for the conditioned souls and blesses them with the relish of Sri Krishna's nectarian sweetness. Sri Rupa and Sanatana are called Prem Bhakti Rasa Krupa. Since they are the shelter of this most sweet and cooling juice of loving devotion. Actually, the extent of their loving devotion was not as small as the contents of a well. It is vast and deep as an ocean. The flavors of loving devotion that dwell in their hearts are manifest in the form of the books 
they composed. And even now, thousands of people escape from the fire of the threefold material miseries by diving in the rasa well of these books. Become blessed with the relish of the flavors of loving devotion. <coughs> and will forever remain blessed. Of this there is no doubt. Sanatana Yugala Uj Valamaya Tanu, which means that their bodies are made of the brilliant transcendental erotic mellows for Yugala Ujvala Rasa that also form the bodies of Sri Sri Radha Madhava. Mm, sorry, can you re repeat that last sure. sentence? Sure. Um, so after this, Srila Thakura Mahasaya calls Sri Sri Rupa Sanatana Yugala Uj Valamaya Tanu, which means that their bodies are made of the brilliant transcendental erotic mellows or yugala ujvala rasa that also form the bodies of Sri Sri Radha Madhava. Sorry. Can you read one more time? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Mm. So after this, Srila Thakura Mahasaya calls Sri Sri Rupa Sanatana Yugala Ujvala Maya Tanu, which means that their bodies are made of the brilliant transcendental erotic mellows. Mm or Yugala Ujvala Rasa that also form the bodies of Sri Sri Radha Madhava. <laughs> the, this Yugala Ujvala Rasa is the greatest of all Rasas. There are five main bhakti rasas, devotional flavors. Tranquility, servanthood, friendship, parenthood, and sweet, brilliant, or erotic love. <coughs> Since the attributes or feelings of the preceding four rasas are contained in it, the madhura, brilliant or erotic rasa, is the greatest of them all. In this connection, Sriman Mahaprabhu's following words of instruction to Sri Rupa Swamipada are found 
in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. So I just a little comment. <coughs> so, so Yugana means Radha and Moha. And here Ujjwara Rasa means Ujjwara means brilliant. So which is most brilliant Rasa? It's Madhura Rasa. So usually Ujjwara Rasa means means Madhura Rasa. So here mentioned Madhura Rasa all quality of this you know other four four Rasa is contained. And sometimes we say Unna to Ujjwara because among the Ujjwar, uh, among the Madura Rasa, nobody given Rasa. This is this Manjari Baba. So maybe later on, maybe there. But so just to, this Ujjwar Rasa, it means Madura Rasa. Just more comment. <coughs> from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Shiman Mahaprabhu's following words of instruction to Sri Rupa Goswami Pada are found here. The two attributes of the tranquil flavor are loyalty to Krishna and renunciation of material desires. These two attributes permeate all the devotees. Permeate means permeate is like they 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 flow through. Hmm? They flow through. They 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 um, enter and they fill. Permeate is usually we not for it to water is permeated, but air, the air permeates. You know, so, like the smell permeated the room, right? Mm -hmm. So it completely mm -hmm. enters, completely mm -hmm. fills, mm -hmm. to flow through. So these two attributes, attributes permeate all the devotees. This is the tranquil flavor. The nature of the tranquil devotee is that he cherishes not the slightest feeling of possessiveness towards Krishna. His knowledge is mainly centered around Krishna's Paramatma and Param Brahma features. In the mood of tranquility, there is only knowledge of Krishna's philosophical status. Whereas in servanthood, there is more of an awareness of Krishna being the Lord full in six opulences. In this awareness of Krishna's Godhead, there is an abundance of reverence and dignity. But the servant always gives great delight to Krishna with his service. And now I refer to the footnote. The servants in Raj, like Raktaka and Patraka, do not see Sri Krishna as the Lord. For it is said, Chaitanya Charitamrita, the people of Raj do not see Krishna as the Lord. Rather, they give him due respect as a local prince.
The mood of a servant has more of a service attitude than the mode of tranquility. Therefore, the mode of servanthood has two attributes. The tranquility's attribute and the service attitude of servanthood are included in the mood of friendship. In servanthood and friendship, there is full faith and confidence as an additional attribute. Krishna climbs on his friend's shoulders and makes them mount his shoulders also. And they play combat tournaments. The friends not only, the friends the friends not only serve Krishna, they also make him serve them. The mood of friendship is predominated by confidence and is devoid of awe and reverence. Therefore, friendship is recognized with three attributes. Here the feeling of possessiveness is greater. The friends see Krishna as their equal. Hence, the Lord is subdued by the mood of friendship. Parental love has the attribute of tranquility, the service attitude of servanthood, and their service bears the name of rearing Krishna. It has the attributes of absence of reverence and hesitation that are inherent to the mood of friendship, but has more qualities of possessiveness. And the parent can even chastise and punish Krishna. They consider Krishna the reared and themselves the responsible protectors. Since parenthood has four attributes, it is just like nectar. And here another passage from Chaitanya Charitamrita explaining this. In the conjugal mellow, there is great loyalty to Krishna and service attitude. The lack of hesitation, characteristic to the mellow of friendship, and the feeling of possessiveness is also much more intense. In the mood of a lover, the devotee serves Krishna with her own body. Therefore, the conjugal mellow has five attributes. Just as the five gross elements are endowed with five progressive attributes, starting with sky having one attribute and ending with the earth having five attributes. Similarly, the conjugal mellow has the five attributes 
of all five mellows. Hence, it is the most relishable and astonishing of all mellows. <coughs> When Vraja's conjugal mellow is linked to the great astonishment of extramarital love, its tastiness attains an endless variety. Above all is the Yugala Ujvala Rasa or the relish of the mellow of Sri Sri Radha Madhav's incomparably sweet meeting. The Sakis in the Yuta party, is it Yuta? You know, this correct? Yes. Yuta? Mm -hmm. Yuta means like a group, like a party. The Sakis in the Yuta or party of Sri Radha are blessed with the relish of this matchless sweetness. Amongst them are again the maidservants of Sri Radha or Manjaris that are dedicated to the service of the divine pair <coughs> while cherishing greater love for Radha than for Krishna. Their relish is the greatest and most astonishing for they are able to witness the very confidential pastimes of Sri Sri Radha Madhava that even the Sakis cannot behold. Their fish-like eyes freely swim in the ocean of bliss of these relishable pastimes. <coughs> And at the same time, they become more blessed than blessed with the good fortune of engaging in their service according to the time. They are so united with Srimati in feeling that Srimati considers them as non-different from her own divine form. Therefore, they show no <coughs> sign of any hesitation in beholding the divine pair, Sri Sri Radha Madhava. At that time, and engaging in their private service. What's more, as a result of their very wonderful oneness in feeling with Srimati, <clears throat> the signs of Krishna's enjoyment on Srimati's body is exactly reflected on their bodies as well. Therefore, the leaders of these eternally perfect manjaris, Sri Rupa Manjari and Labanga Manjari, who are Rupa and Sanatana in Sri Gauda's pastimes, are called Yukala Udvalamaya Tanu, the embodiments of Radha Krishna's brilliant amorous love. So, Radha, Radha. 
Priyadi, what do you mean, Tanu? Bardi. Tanu, it says, Yugula Ujvala Maya Tanu. Do you have the meaning of Tanu? Body. It says body in the text. Body. Body, right? Yeah, it has other meanings too. Hmm? Hmm? Which meaning? As a meaning. It refers to us like a deer. Tongue is not shy. Deer. Also body also meaning. Deer also. So this is this is nice taking us to the taking us from this, you know, this progression, right? through these different rasas and then explaining so nicely how Rupa and Sanatana are containing the same bodily qualities as Radharani because the Majari is so intimately connected to Radharani that they are one in feeling and this is taking us from kind of this um, kind of this common perception of Rupa and Goswami as these very renounced devotees up to, you know, into this very, very, very highest, you know, stage of their, of their existence, their transcendental qualities. It's very sweet, very, so beautifully described here. comes back kind of down to earth <laughs> says, the question may now be raised why would those who are Viraja's eternally perfect Manjaris now humbly and eagerly perform such sadhana as if they are ordinary practitioners The blessed author explains this by saying, by their grace, a wish-yielding tree was manifest to remove all the distress of the people. By their grace, a wish-yielding tree was manifest to remove all the distress of the people. Actually, Vraja's Nitya Siddha, Sri Rupa Manjari, and Labanga Manjari have descended with Sri Goranga, who is himself the joint form of Radha Krishna. to personally practice his beloved worship in the sweet, loving mood of Raj, and to preach it to the world as well by writing a huge storehouse of sacred books on the subject. By their grace, the people of the world attained the example of how to practice this Vraj devotion. And through their books, they attained knowledge on the principles of Sambandha, the soul's <coughs> relationship with God, Abhidheya, the means to attain God and Prayojana, the ultimate goal of life, love of God, so that they can forever be saved from the grip of the threefold mundane miseries. 
The repetition of birth and death and the pangs of lamentation. However, the destruction of suffering and lamentation are only concomitant results of their preaching. Actually, the people of the world have been blessed with the attainment of the loving service of the lotus feet of their most beloved Sri Sri Radha Madhava. And to reveal this, the blessed author said, Prakata Kalapa Tarujanu, meaning that Srila Rupa and Sanatana are like wish yielding trees descending to bestow the fruits of Prem in the form of Manjari Bhav that is part of Raja's conjugal mellows. In this world, it is very rare to find a wish yielding tree. But Sri Rupa Sanatana are Prakata Kalapa Taru or manifest wish yielding trees. Which means that they reveal themselves to all people of the world and bless everyone who lived in their time and bless everyone else for the eternal future by promulgating the path of praying through their handwritten books that are filled with the syllables of love. <laughs> syllables of love. I think this is the most important kind of, kind of essence of which part? This, you know, Sri Rupa Sanatana are like wish, wish yielding trees descending to bestow the fruits of Prema in the form of Manjari Baba. That is part of Braja conjugal mellows. In this world, it is very rare to find a wish yielding tree. But Sri Rupa Sanatana, a Prakata Karpataru, or a manifest wish yielding trees, which means that they revealed themselves to all people of the world and blessed everyone who lives in their time and blessed everyone else for the eternal future by promulgating the path of Prema through their handwritten books that are full with syllable of Prema. I think this is kind of essence of our... Underline it. Yes, this is very important. So Can you explain that? <coughs> so I think Maha why Mahaprabhu appear in this world? The reason is one reason, main reason is here. 
カビラジゴースワミエクスプレインマハパブルズアピアレンスエクサーナルリーズンエズイワントゥディストリビティユガダルマウィチーズサンキルタンダツグッドバッドインターナルリーズンエズフリーソーヒワントゥノーザグローリーオブシュリマティラダラリーズラブセカンドワンズワイラダラニーエスアトラクトクリシナズクリシナファットカインドブアトラクティブネスネスアトラクティブネスクリシナハスエンオソマハパブウォントテイストエスラダラインズラブソゼアフォークリシナ・トゥック、アクチャイ・クリシナ・スピールズ、ラダ・ラーニーズ・フィーリング、エンオソ・ラダ・ラーニーズ・ボディ・カラー。そうです、グルデブ・セイング・ライク・サンドウィッチ、ボディ・カラー・エンド・フィーリング、インサイド・オーソ・クリシナ、ウォント・テイスティット。そう、ユージュアリー・ピープル・シンキング、ザッツ・オール。But actually, more, more than that. No. After tasting, 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 Because we are very tiny, spirit soul, and Radhika is only one. So, and then how can we taste Radha's Baba, Radha's feeling? Then, only possible to become a maid servant of Radhika, which is called Manjari or Kinkari. And who is oneness with Radha's feeling? They are so dedicated. They are so pure. They have no desire to unite Krishna personally. So, if we got this feeling of Manjari, or if we become Manjari, and then that ordinary living entity could taste this Radha's prema, Radha's feeling. So, And then Mahaprabhu personally exhibit, but he handed over the task to Rupa Sanatana and Raghunath and Goswami. So please write it down this feeling, this mood, this love, or how to practice, or also philosophy. So, And Rupa Goswami, Ragnar Das Goswami, they are Nietzsche Sita. Actually, they are not like us. They are perfect Nietzsche Sita, Manjari. But they came here, they act just ordinary human beings, which conditioned, condition, like conditioned souls. <coughs> And then they behave, perfect behavior, which we could follow it. So this sentence is Mahaprabhu's actually Mano Vishta. So, and then this mission handed over Nitai Janabama and Advaita. Charya or you know, Gadadar, another Paribar to distribute this Manjari Baba or, or feeling of Radhika. So, and the, the mercy of all Goswamis, all our Acharya in our Parampara, this handed down. And we got through Guru Dev's mercy. Actually, this mercy comes from 
Janaba Nitai and also Goswamis, who is Manjani. So therefore, this part is most important, I think, part of this, our book, to understand also. Then the, someone who gets this one is most fortunate person in this Kali Yuga. Or if someone who does not get this, this one, it's very unfortunate. Yeah, very, very nicely summarized. Um, what's very nice here also when it says, bless everyone who lived in their time, right? Yes. But also, it bless everyone for the eternal future. Eternal future. Means forever. And what's really special about this knowledge is that even after five, six hundred years, it still remains so pure, unalloyed. We use the word unalloyed. Unalloyed means not mixed. Like with metals, an alloy means you mix sometimes iron with copper to make brass, you know, something like this. It's an alloy, it means it's mixed. But this is remaining unalloyed, it's remaining pure, this message, through the centuries. Even today we're sitting in the 21st century and hearing this just like it was in that time. Whereas we see, we can compare to other faiths, Christianity, so many things are becoming mixed and watered and, and contaminated and distorted and perverted over the years. But this is so pure, it's remaining unalloyed. But even we, coming from so far away Western countries where people you know, have no concept, we can come here to Vrindavan and really you know, imbibe the true, unalloyed, pure teaching of this through these books and through this association. So I want to it's share one. It's remarkable. It's just you know a testament to how pure this teaching is. It's so so nice. So I want to share one story. It's one Siddha Mahatma called Vijay Krishna Goswami. And he said to one before he before he he left his body, he said to his disciples. Mahaprabhu time, Mahaprabhu give initiation only a few people. Actually, at that time, many people desired, but they could not make it. So, that people desire initiation. And they, that's Vijaya Krishna Gosami said. Whoever initiate, that actually initiate like Mahaprabhu. Wow. He said to his disciple, you know. Because, because, why that? Because this is Parampara. Because Parampara means handed, like handed down, like I say, some fruits, like a uh, any fruit like apple or um, say like uh, you know some fruits become very high place like say mango but if and if down if ordinary people cannot get mango fruits but some of them put on the ladder ladder and then someone climbs the ladder and then one, one devotee took this fruit, mango. And then, please come, you know, I want to hand it over, this fruit. If we want to try to take fruit and kind of shaking the tree, then mango become broken. Right? So, but if climb the ladder, Okay, I take, oh, you know, please, can I? And then, can I to Kishori? You know, like this. And one by one, hand it over this fruit. 
then finally we can get this mango without broken. So similarly, parampara means Gurudev want to give whatever received from his Gurudev without broken, without changing. So this is the beauty of this our parampara. And this also mentioned, this very interesting Baba mentioned, you also you have read. Uh, which one? In this age, no? Some, where, where the, you mentioned. Oh, it, their time. Mm. So they reveal themselves to all people of the world and bless everyone who lives in their time. Means especially, you know, after Mahaprabhu, or, well, you know, in that time. Even now also, if we get the blessing from Guru Dev, kind of, we can get the same power. If we are very sincere, we are very humble, we can receive it. So this is, this is amazing actually. This is my feeling. Sanatana are the best of all wish yielding trees of the world. For ordinary wish yielding trees can only give worldly objects to the petitioners, but they are unable to bestow praying. Sri Rupa Sanatana are Prem Kalpatarus. Prem Kalpatarus who bless those who take their shelter by giving them the highest love of Raj. Therefore, they are the greatest or Prakata Kalpatarus. Again, if someone out of ignorance asks something from a wish-yielding tree, which is not good for him, the tree will give it to him. The wish-yielding tree does not distinguish between what is good and what is not good for the applicant. But Rupa Sanatana, the greatest wish yielding trees, will bless the applicant by giving him praying, even if he actually desires something else but Krishna. For instance, in the village of Manakara, there was a poor Brahmin who attained a vision of Kashishwara, Sri Vishwanath Shiva, in a dream. Lord Shiva ordered him to go to Sri Sanatana Goswami Pada to get the touchstone from him. However, when he attained the darshan and association of Srila Sanatana Goswami Pada, he gave up his desire for the touchstone and became blessed with the treasure of Krayam. This is a well-known story. 
that is the great difference between the best or prakata wish yielding trees, Shirupa Sanatana, and the wish yielding trees of this world. I answer this in a little comment. So, why Shiva? Tell this Brahman, poor Brahman, to go to Sanatana Gosan. Why not Rupa Gosan? It's not mentioned. But my feeling is like this. So Shiva lives in holy dam and protecting Dharma. And one of Shiva is Gopi Shura Mahadev. And another is, you know, many Shiva, maybe five Shiva protecting. And then one of Shiva is Chakre Shura Mahadev in the Manashi Ganga. So Sanatana Goswami, just next to Chakre Shura Mahadev, is doing bhajan. So, and one day, and so many mosquitoes was there. So Sanatana Gosami is thinking, oh, this place is not good for my bhajan. Let me go another place. So Sanatana Gosami want to leave this place. Then Lord Shiva appeared <laughs> in front of, you know, and, and Sanatana Gosami. Maybe he may disguise, disguise or I don't know. Maybe, maybe the other Shiva, I don't know. So why you are leaving? Oh, this place many mosquitoes. I don't like it. And uh, no, 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 no. This is, you know, from this day, I, you know, no mosquito. I promise you. Because I need your association. <laughs> Because Shiva likes, you know, Sanatana Gosami's association very much. <laughs> so, and then Sanatana Gosami, if you say, okay, but if mosquito coming, I go. <laughs> and then, from that day, no mosquito coming. So, means Lord Shiva likes Sanatana Gosami very much and the kind of deep relationship. So therefore, I, I think, I feel, so therefore, you go to Sanatana Gosai, and he can give you most precious thing. Mm. Is, isn't uh, also Sanatana Gosai the elder brother? Of Rupa. Of Rupa? Rupa and Anupam also. So this can be also a reason, no? That he's an elder. Yeah, so that's also possible. Giving respect to the possible. elder brother. And also possible he is Sambanda Gyanacharya. Yeah. So he want to give the other Sambanda. So, and this story is like this. He was poor, means, you know, he want to have gold, you know, or, like, you know, kind of precious stone. And, uh, oh, Shiva said to go to Sanatana Goswami, maybe he may have so many nice things. And he was asking, Hey, Baba, please, I'm very poor. I need, you know, money. I need some kind of gold. Hey, please give me something, some jewel or something. And Sanata Gosai Pada said, you know, there are many, many, many precious stones there. You can find out. And then that person find out and then brought in, in his house, and he's very happy. But he was wondering, but wait a minute, why this precious stone is outside? And he said, please look, look for, if someone who is precious, someone who is, you know, safe, he, you know, keep safe, you know, because, you know, somebody may steal, you know, but he's, he's saying, oh, please take it, whatever you like. That means he must have more precious things. <laughs> so, and then again, that poor Brahman went to Sanatana Gosami. 
I think this stone is not a real precious thing. I think you may have more precious thing. Otherwise, why you you say, oh, should this fall down outside? Mm -hmm. So then Sanatana Goswami was very pleased. Okay, I give you more precious thing. Come, near, come to me. Come up, you know. And then he gave Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And then that person get to them. <laughs> and this is Baba, Baba's kind of story. This I just want to read a comment. <laughs> We see that happening now. People coming to Mugir Mandir because first time in India, whatever, they hear Vrindavan. They come here for you know, some sightseeing or something, and then they get the association. Next thing you know, they're chanting mantra and you know having darshan as Radhamohan. So. <laughs> and Guru Dev. And sometimes, you know. Sometimes devotee was, you know, okay, I'll stay one day or a few days and then meet Gurudev, you know, and then, oh, I want to stay more. And then sometimes stay a few months. <laughs> and then he changed completely. Like another Kishori, huh? Another Kishori also like this. Two saints have revealed all the all the ways of loving devotion by writing them down in their books. By hearing these topics, the heart floats in ecstatic love and takes shelter of the Madhuras. The amorous mellow. Actually, this bus is ninth bus will start in this bus. So eight bus is you know, finished and now now leading was ninth bus. <coughs> Yeah, um, it's usually in a bold letter, but here it's not in bold. I didn't notice it, but now you, you brought to my attention. There's a nice. But normally it's in a bold, in the dark. You know, yes, print, but here it's not. It's because reason. because you know, if someone make a yeah. book first time, yeah, yeah. sometimes you know some some kind of. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, so. Next verse. Let me read again. <coughs> These two saints have revealed all the ways of loving devotion by writing them down in their books. By hearing these topics, heart floats ecstatic love and takes shelter of the Madhuradas, the Amorous Mellow. <coughs> and now Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Patsika. Shelter of the sweet flavors of the divine pear. After this, Srila Narottama Thakura Mahasaya glorifies the books of Sri Sri Rupa Sanatana that are filled with the syllables of pure love. Revealing their great gift, he sings. These two saints have revealed all the ways of loving devotion by writing them down in their books. Sri Rupa and Sanatana are both Mahasaya which means they are generous and high-minded. Hence, 
Although they are constantly floating in an ocean, constant meditation, they are always immersed in the relishing of transcendental mellows. They are still very compassionate towards the conditioned souls and have, out of their own generosity, recorded their transcendental experience within their sacred books. Sri <coughs> Rupa and Sanatana are both Mahasaya, which means they are generous and high-minded. Hence, although they are constantly floating in an ocean of constant meditation, and are always immersed in the relishing of transcendental mellows, they are still very compassionate towards the conditioned souls and have, out of their own generosity, recorded their transcendental experiences within their sacred books. Yeah. Go on. Another meaning of Mahasaya is a bee-like relisher of devotional flavors. The relished bhaktiras, they relished bhaktiras by hearing, chanting, and recollecting in exactly the same manner as they relished it in their sacred books. Yeah, by hearing, chanting, and recollecting. Recollecting means remembering. By hearing, chanting, and recollecting in exactly the same manner as they relished it in writing in their sacred books. Those who are engaged in composing bhakti or rasa scriptures can understand how much relish of wonderful bhakti or bhajan, ras, is attained through that writing work. Or Srila Thakur Mahasaya personally wants to reveal a very beautiful meaning of the word Mahasaya. Radhika Charanashraya Yekore Se Mahasaya. Whoever takes shelter of Radhika's lotus feet is called a Mahasaya. Shirupa Sanatana are themselves exclusively surrendered to Sri Radha's lotus feet. Since in reality, in reality, they are Shimati's loving maidservants who are non-different from her. This is this is only how they were able to compose such sacred scriptures filled with loving syllables. Srila Thakur Mahasaya describes how wonderful the books are that were composed by Sri Rupa Sanatana. He says, 
So sorry, this is so this is <coughs> this this before sentence. This I think is very very important. <coughs> this Baba say. Shri Rupa Sanatana as themselves exclusively surrendered to Shri Radha's lotus feet. Since, in reality, their Shri Mati's loving maid servants who are non different from her. This, who are non different from her. So, this is very, this is very important sense. So therefore, Rupa Sanatana knows Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart. And Rupa Manjari, Rabanga Manjari knows Sri Mati Radhika's heart. They are feeling one. Because Manjari is like a, Rupa Manjari is like a Radha's Rupa, kind of expand as Rupa Manjari. So this Baba mentioned, maid servant is, Radhika's maid servant is so close, so intimate. They are non different from Radhika. So this I felt this very important. Srila Thakura Mahasaya describes how wonderful the books are that were composed by Sri Rupa Sanatana. And now from the sloka, from the verse, we have this line translated. <coughs> these two saints, these two saints have revealed all the loving ways Revealed all the ways of loving devotion by writing them down in their books. They have revealed all the ways of loving devotion by writing them down in their books. In the dictionary, we can find different synonyms for the for the word riti, order, succession kind, sort, nature, disposition, rules, regulations, attributes, religion, virtue, etc. Here, all these meanings can apply. Srila Thakura Mahasaya is so wonderfully eloquent that from a small two-syllable wor word, like riti, he can make a wide-ranging implication of the subjects discussed in the huge pile of books that were composed by Srila Rupa and Sanatana. Successive order. In his two books, Bhakti Rasamitra Sintu and Ujjwal Nilamini, Srimad Rupa Goswami Pada has wonderfully outlined the successive stages of attaining love and loving devotion from faith and associating with saints to engagement in bhajan. Then the successive stages of more advanced loving devotion. From sneha and mana up to pranaya and mahabhav. And finally, the emotional depth 
of the various manifestations of Mahabha. Rudha, Adhiruddha, Modana, Mohana, and Madhana. In the first canto... Okay, this, so this is... I cannot explain everything, but... Uh, <coughs> so especially this mentioned Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu and Ujwara Nira. So Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu describes like a basic uh, philosophy of Bhakti. And especially he describes mainly uh, Sadhana Bhakti and Bhavana Bhakti, uh, Baba Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. So he mentioned from Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anarata Nibriti, Nishita, Ruchi, Asakti, and Baba, and Prema. So this briefly mentioned, or sometimes in detail mentioned, in this Bhaktira Samhita Sindhu. But he mentioned Prema's part is very small. Because Prema is very huge. So after Prema, or from Prema, he described it about in Ujjwara uh, Niramani. So this mentioned from Prema, uh, Suneha, Mana, Pranaya, Laga, Anuraga, and sometimes Baba, and also Mahababa. And also this describes Mahaba also until Madana Mahababa, ultimate Madana Mahababa. So he mentioned. So therefore this why successive order? Because Rupa Goswami is so, so talented, genius. So he could describe it from first stage and highest stage. The, by the mercy of Rupa Goswami Bada, we may understand some this kind of. It's, it's remarkable because, I mean, we can only imagine, right? we haven't experienced, but we can only imagine that someone who is in this Nishta stage, this Mahabhav, they don't want to come out, right? <laughs> okay. But still, they are so compassionate, and they have, they have been empowered because they are eternal associates of Mahabhav to fulfill the second part of his mission, is to share this with everyone at that time and for future generations. So it's really a remarkable expression of the Lord's love. That he says he's not saying this is only an elite thing for only a few. This is something to distribute to all, all living entities forever. The Lord is so merciful, is so limitless, limitless mercy, limitless. He is the supreme personality of God. There's no, no, no limit to His love. That He is distributing this through His expansions, through His eternal associates. And through all of the eternal time, we at this present time are so fortunate that we are receiving this. Sometimes we can't fathom, we can't actually appreciate the magnitude of this generosity that's coming. It's such a high, priceless thing that it's hard for us in our conditioned state to actually accept it, you know? But through the mercy of Gurudev, he has, he is a, 
an agent of this, you know. <laughs> is, so he has been empowered to to open our eyes with this pencil, and with this, as we're reading the previous couple of verses. But only through the association of the pure devotees are we able to get this mercy. I just wanted to kind of emphasize how special this is. I'm sure we're all feeling it, you know, being here. It's uh, we can say it's the most important moment in our lives, right, to get this opportunity. And uh, I want to glorify Prabhupada a little bit. Mm. Last time we went to Mahanidhi, Madam Gopal Baba. Other than one devotee question, my Guru Dev said, don't read the 10th count of Bhagavan. And then Mahanidhi <laughs> Maharaj will explain. When Prabhupada came to the United States, first time 1965, at that time he brought the uh, first count of Srimad Bhagavan. And then uh, he print next next thing he print Bhagavad Gita. I don't know which year, maybe 67 or some some year. And then next book he did Nectar of Devotion, which is a kind of explanation of this Bhaktira Samrita Sin. Ah, sorry, ah, sorry, sorry, Krishna book, sorry, Krishna book, Krishna book, maybe 69 or something, and then 70, around 70, and he make nectar devotion. Now, why did Prabhupada do that? Prabhupada knew he could leave any time, right? I mean, on the Janaduta, he suffered, you know, heart attacks, he was close to death, and he knew that he can leave any time. So he felt extreme sense of urgency to reveal these things to in English. Because without Prabhupada, how would we know, right? Unless we born into a Bengali body, how would we know these things? Or Sanskrit, in this case, the Dr. Rasmus is the Sanskrit. So, you know, when we think of Prabhupada, we have to just be so full of gratitude that he personally, personally gave up such a beautiful bhajan in Radha We've all been to Radha and seen where he was and being there in that holy of holiest places, why would he just get up and come again? He is also empowered just like Rupa and Sadatra, that same, same mission given by his guru, Bhakti Sarata Saraswati Thakur, to come to, to distribute this. Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhuttala Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Svapadati Kam. This mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to distribute throughout the world this message of this highest claim to give to everyone. And only it could be done with the books. How else could you do without the books? In those days, there were only books. There was no internet. There was no digital transformation. It had to be written and published. And it was a great task to publish a book in those days. It wasn't an easy thing. It's a miracle, actually. When we speak of modern-day miracles, this is really the greatest miracle of the modern age that has come to the face of the earth. Truly really a miracle. I want to share one. Guru Dev and Parma Guru Dev said, Prapada is Nitai. Nitai open our eyes. Without Nitai, we cannot make relationship with this pure love. For us Westerners, we cannot get without Nitai, without Prabhupada. And still this 
instruction of Prabhupada. Prabhupada's book is still here and disciples are here. There are no difference of still need time. So by glorification of uh, by Jananda Maharaj and Sinanta Maharaj, I feel again and again. Prapada is Nita. Without uh, Prapada, we cannot get it. And we are very lucky because Gudev also very intimate relationship with Prapada. The mission is the same. Go to Bhakti. Our Swami. Thank you very much. First canto of his Sri Brihad Bhagavatam Gita, Srimad Sanatana Goswami Pad has given a wonderful description of the successive stages of devotion of the devotees who became the object of Sri Krishna's grace. And in the second canto, he has made a wonderful description of the succession or loving devotion, succession of loving devotion, she said in various transcendental abodes like Vaikuntha according to their rasa. What is my name? I read again. Shimat Sanatana Goswami Pad has given a wonderful description of the successive stages of devotion of the devotees who became the object of Sri Krishna's grace. And in the second canto, he has made a wonderful description of the succession of loving devotion in various transcendental abodes, like Vaikuntha, according to their rasa. In the same manner, the word riti may mean kind or sort. The Goswamis have expertly divided the five prema bhakti rasas into santa, dasya, sakya, vatsarya, and madhura and have given nice examples of each of them. Similarly, when riti is taken to mean nature, as in disposition, their books also extensively describe how to become absorbed in Krishna consciousness after removing all other non-Krishna conscious absorptions. Riti can also mean padhati, which means the rules and regulations of sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti and prema bhakti, which have also been elaborately described in their books, along with their wonderful qualities and virtues. Apart from this, Srimad Sanatana Goswami Pad 
has revealed different rules and regulations in devotional practice or devotional theologies in his books. Sri Hari Bhakti Vilasa, Lila Stava, or Dasyama Charita, and Brihat Vaishnava Toshani Tika. Sri Rupa Goswami Pad has similarly described the secrets of loving devotion in books like Laku Bhagavad Kamrita, Vidanta Madhava, Lalita Madhava, Stava Mala, and Dana Keli Kamudi. In order to make the, those grave secrets of bhakti ras easily understandable for people of this world. I just wanted to ask uh, what is what is Guru Dev's um, recommendation on how much we should delve into these books and especially when we hear things about rules and regulations devotional practice how we should approach these kind of things. I kind of know, but I can kind of speculate, but then I'd like to hear from someone here who knows more about this. So Guru Dev does not want to say, it seems that. Okay. Guru Dev is teaching the very simple. It means, our goal is Swarupa and Swarupa city. And uh, to attain Swarupa city, no, no, uh, no, sorry. Uh, Stai Baba. So, to get to, say, if someone wants to manjari, say, like manjari Stai Baba, so he's suggesting three books. So this is Prema Bhakti Chandrika, and Radha Rasa Sadhariti, and Virapak Sumanja. So if we concentrate these three books, then we can attain like uh, Stai Baba. And slowly, slowly, if we fortunate, we can get Swarupa and Swarupa So Guru Dev is simple because we now Kali Yuga, we don't have so much memory and so much time. I realize even reading, hearing Bilapak Manjari, which composed only 104 verses, but still it takes even if I read, we read each day one bus deeply, still it takes, you know, 104 days. Like say, four months. If we read very more deeply, then it takes one year. Or if we hear, it takes one year. Then if say three books, how many does it take? 
So we don't have enough time to do this, to read all the books. Reading only not realizing. Yes. So therefore, especially he's saying, Guru Dev is saying, better than hearing from Rashika Vaishnava. Because reading is not so enough. Hearing, every book recommended, Shurabana. Especially, uh, this is Sajati Sangha. I feel this is Guru Dev's suggestion. <laughs> Sri Rupa and Sanatana have revealed the ways of loving devotion in their books. In other words, they have revealed the deep secrets of loving devotion by elaborately describing them. Srimad Rupa Goswami Pad has written in the Bhakti Rasmita Sindhu, My master Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad has clearly described all the sweetness of the devotional theology in his own book named Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Although they are so confidential, This must also be understood of Sri Rupa Goswami Pad's own books. For the benefit of the people of this world, they have clearly revealed these devotional theologies. And the brightest example of this is the fact that, that Srimad Sanatana Goswami Pad wrote a commentary on his own book, Sri Brihad Bhagavatamrita. This means that although he had quoted examples from the Puranas in, in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, to elaborately describe the devotional theology, he still will a commentary on each of these verses to make this theology easily understandable for everyone. Therefore, Srila Dakota Mahasaya justly says, these two great souls have revealed all the ways of loving devotion in their own books. Hearing as well as broadcasting and recollecting the books of Sri Rupa Sanatana inundates the heart and mind in a pool of ecstatic loving flavors. The purport of this is that in the words of the scriptures and the Mahajanas, the greatest means to attain love for Sri Krishna or to relish mellows is to associate with saints who are like-minded, pleasant, and more advanced than oneself. But such association 
is extremely rarely attained in this world. Mm. So I think I think this this is very important point. In the world of the scriptures and the Mahajanas, the greatest mean to attain love for Sri Krishna or to relish Mero is to associate with saints who are like-minded, present and more advanced than oneself. But such association is extremely rarely attained in this world. Here mentioned, attain love for Sri Krishna. Also, Sri Krishna Gurudev say means Radhika and Manjai also included. And uh, so Gurudev was making us this kind of sangha, inter international uh, a sangha, and uh, here in Brindama, every morning and evening we have a sangha. So we are thinking this is kind of, you know, like uh, natural, or uh, it is like a uh, ordinary thing. But actually, this is very rare. This kind of precious jewel in this material world. Because, especially outside the Braja, difficult to find the devotees. How to speak, difficult to find the Rashka Vaishnava. It's extremely rare. So Gurudev was very kindly opened the storehouse of Prema. So this, this sentence is very important. So, Sri <coughs> Rupa Sanatana have placed all their great and deep realizations about the treasure of their beloved devotional practice in these books. Secondly, Sri Rupa Sanatana have placed all their great and deep realizations about the treasure of their beloved devotional practice in their books. Secondly, each syllable of any of these books is filled with prema. Therefore, the best and most powerful means to attain prema and relish rasa is to hear and chant them. These books are especially kanataharas, texts to be memorized for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas who worship Radha Krishna. For they are the vessels filled with Radha Krishna's Madhura Ras. All the books of Sri Rupa Sanatana are filled with the flavors of Sri Sri Radha Madhava's forms, attributes, and pastimes. The expertise of worshipping them in order to attain prema, and theologies that are favorable to this aim. Thus, the hearts of the worshippers of the divine pair are filled with the flavors of ecstatic love when they savor these sacred books. 
Sometimes we see the reading of Parananda, Hoy, Chite, but that can have the same meaning as above. For Premananda, for Parananda, the paramount bliss. There is no greater bliss than this anywhere in the world. On the other hand, without relishing these books, there is no way in which one can take shelter of the sweet flavors of Sri Radha Madhava or have any experience of them. That is indicated here. We finish this. Yes, so that means, you know, our Sampradaya, Godia Sampradaya, Sampradaya from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's very, very, if I say, elevated and fortunate because we have a Rupa, Sanatana, Raghunatha book for meditation, for practicing our bhakti. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, we are so fortunate to be in this Sampradaya. Also, we can have a, this Manjari Baba. So, and this is, I feel, you know, Mahaprabhu Sampradaya or Nityana Sampradaya is so great and uh, we are so much indebted and appreciate. You know, we want to give so much appreciation to all Acharyas who give us uh, this, distribute this nectar and teaching. Uh,